Hello lovelies and happy new year. Serene Dream here with a little mini reading for all 12 signs. I'm giving you this as a little treat for January only. I might do it for February as well. Um, only because I had to get the yearlies out and I didn't really have the time to do the yearlies in addition to a full reading for all 12 signs as well. Um, so yeah, I'm giving you all this little treat here, a little mini insight for each of the 12 signs for the month of January, 2022. Um, it is gonna be a general reading, so it's not gonna resonate with every single person of each sign, but however, it can apply if you have, um, if you are the sun, for your sun, moon, or rising signs. If you would like to uh, check out your year ahead readings, you can click on the Vimeo link below. If you would like to um, book a personal reading with me. You can click on the link to my website below as well and follow me on Instagram um, at Serene Dream. And um, trying to think if there's anything else that I need to share or say before I get started. I don't think so. Um, if, I, if I recall it, I hope I remember it at the end. But let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin with Aries. Let me timestamp this here. Okay, Aries. For the month of January. You're saying goodbye to something. I feel like it's something you've been holding on to for a very long time. And I feel like you finally have the strength to let it go once and for all. I feel like this is something you've been struggling to let go for. I'm hearing years. And I feel like 2022 is something about it that just made you say or realize that it's time and that you need to move forward and you need to have a new beginning. No more looking back at the past. Like you realize the past, everything that has happened in the past, everything that, you know, was going on in your life or this specific thing that was going on in your life wasn't, it, it serves no purpose anymore. I feel like it was stressing you out. Um, it was in some cases even aging you. And I'm hearing let the resentment and hurt go. So for some of you, it's not like something tangible you're letting go of. It's more so something emotional, like an emotional pain or hurt or wound that you were holding on to from the past. And this I'm hearing letting bygones be bygones. So you could be settling like, you know, getting over a grudge that you held for, you know, towards someone or for something for the longest time, like you're moving on from it. Some of you are making amends with somebody that you've been on the outs with for a very long time because you realize that holding this resentment and this grudge is paining you more or causing you more harm than it was the other party. Um, so yeah, some of you, you're reaching out to someone to make amends, to let bygones be bygones. For others, you are letting something or someone go. Um, that you've been holding on to for a long time, you were having, you were struggling to let go, and you're realizing that it's the best thing for you to do that and start off the top of the year, letting it go once and for all to, you know, start off the year fresh. And I'm getting like the next four years. So something about like you starting this cycle, this new cycle at the beginning of 2022 is going to um, allow you to have like a fresh new, like, exciting cycle in your life that's going to last at least for the next four years so it is a good thing that you are um cutting things off now because i just feel like it would have prolonged things and you would have uh been in the cycle for a lot longer but you starting it now is going to give you at least a good four-year run with whatever you know this new cycle is going to bring not to say that after four years you go back to shit it's just I just feel like the next four years might be very important in molding this new cycle in your life. Okay, so let's move on uh, to Taurus. Let me timestamp this here. Okay, Taurus. I'm getting phone calls. Some of you might be hearing some news like uh, via phone. This doesn't have to be an actual call. It could be like a text message, something, some kind of um, correspondence via the phone, whether it be a text message or a phone call, video call even. But I feel like someone needs to get something out. 
Like someone needs to share something with you. Someone has a lot to say to you. That's what I'm getting. Someone has a lot to say to you and whatever they're going they they have to say to you, they feel like they have to like say it to you over the phone. I don't know. Like they might maybe it's something about like the barrier of the phone makes this person feel more at ease in sharing whatever they have to say to you. Like they don't want to say it to your face. Um they may not but they may not even want to put it in like a written form they might just want to talk to you but they don't want to do a face to face that's what i'm getting here whatever it is you're hearing i feel like it's going to put a smile on your face this is something you've been waiting to hear cuz i'm getting a very giddy energy around this and um, it's going to open, this communication is going to open the door to something, like a door that's been closed for a long time is finally going to get open due to this communication that's coming into you. And I do feel like this is coming in, I mean, it could be the reverse that you're giving this communication to someone else, but I'm getting more strongly that this is communication coming into you. It's going to be a little shocking. I feel like it's shocking. Uh, the, who the communication is coming from not just what they're saying but it's just who also like who is saying it to you this could include some sort of invite for some sort of future event that's coming up that this person is also going to include in that communication in that conversation i'm getting like take your breath away Yeah, so some uh, some of you, you're receiving some very exciting communication that's going to open up a door that seemed like it's been closed for a very long time. It could have felt like you had a block in your life. And with this communication coming in, it lifts that block, it opens that door. You're really happy with the outcome. Some of you, this communication is going to be an invite extended, like along with everything else that said, the conversation might close out with you getting invited somewhere um, to some kind, sort of event or um, something going on in the near future. And I feel like it also makes the other, the person who's bringing the communication, I feel like they're also gonna be happy once this gets out because I feel like they're gonna have a favorable response from you. But prior to, no, you know what I'm getting? Prior to this person coming in to communicate whatever this news is to you, I feel like this person is gonna be crossing your mind constantly. Like you're gonna be thinking about this person a lot. So when they reach out to you, it's gonna be a surprise, but not so much because you're gonna be like, you've been on my mind so heavy. And the reason why they're, they're gonna be on your mind so heavy is because they're thinking about you. They're thinking of reaching out to you. So I just feel like that telepathy is gonna play a role um, for, I'm here like the first few weeks. So the communication might come in toward the ending of the month, while the first few weeks are gonna be filled with you like telepathically connecting to this person, thinking about you, like they might be just coming in randomly in your thoughts, or they could even be coming through dreams. Um, but either way, it's like this person is going to be giving you some sort of telepathic um, signal that they're coming to communicate with you. So when they do reach out, you are gonna be surprised, but then you're gonna be like, oh, that's why you've been on my mind so much. Like, that's why you've been in my dreams, you know, and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's what I feel like is going on with you. In January, Taurus, let's move on to Gemini. Timestamp here. I'm getting quaffed. Um, I feel like there's someone that you're dealing with who maybe uh, talks a good game, but they don't really back it up in their actions. Like they may come off very polished, very uh, 
well put together, very serious, with great intentions. But I feel like this person has like a, a hidden agenda. And um, I feel like you you're like you're a little uh, like you're you're peeping this a bit. Like you're not naive to what is going on. You may not know exactly what this person has up their sleeve, but you know that you have to watch them, and you gotta like you you gotta keep a close eye on this person. Because I just feel like whatever game they're selling, you're not buying it. You're just like okay, it's like you're not throwing them out completely. But you're like allowing them in close enough to you in order to uh, just get a better understanding of what it is you're sensing about this person. Some of you are going to find out for sure that this person is full of shit and you're going to be like, I knew it. I knew something didn't sit right with me about this person. And at that point, you're going to just completely dismiss this person altogether. Yeah, I feel like you're going to pour this this person, whatever they have, whatever they're offering, whatever they have going on, you're just going to pour it down the drain because you're going to be like, I want no parts of this. this you're full of shit. Um, it's going to upset this person that they couldn't pull the wool over your eyes because they thought they were smarter than you or they felt like they felt like they could pull a fast one over on you. So the fact that you are bright enough to catch what they were doing is going to upset them. And um, I'm getting like this person would be like, damn, they're going to be like, so they're going to feel so defeated because they, they felt like whatever they were doing, whatever their plan was, that it was going to be played out perfectly, you know, on you or with you that you were going to buy whatever it is they were selling. But the fact that you discover the truth about themselves fast before they can really even do anything it's going to leave them in a state of like confusion and they may even be a bit distraught over it because they may like be saying to themselves like what do i do now like now that i like they were betting on this it's like you were almost like a racehorse to this person and it's like they're going to be betting on you know you winning that race like through whatever means or whatever they set up. It's like they, yeah, I just feel like they were plotting. They're going to be plotting on you, but you're going to catch it before it materializes into anything that can be harmful to you in any way. Because I just really feel like this person, they, who you are, they're, they don't perceive you the correct way. They perceive you to be very naive and like unaware of you know people doing anything they just feel like you're you were sort of like a person that they can get over on but they're gonna find out very soon and maybe even in the most uh unexpected way that you are not the one to play with and you're far from naive you're gonna check this person at the door and completely block them out from proceeding with any plan they had to get over on you so yeah it's gonna shock this person leave them in a state of confusion have them very upset but it's really nothing they can do because their hands are tied at this point and I feel like you were their plan a through z they didn't really have anything else to bet on or turn to if you didn't work out because they were sure that you were a sure thing but they get a rude awakening okay so Let's move on to Cancer. Let me timestamp this here. Cancer, I feel like you're taking on way too much. And I feel like you're doing it to distract yourself from something that you don't want to face within your own life or about yourself. So it's like you're taking on other people's burdens to distract yourself from the work you have to do in your own life or on yourself. 
And so when anybody comes around and they're expressing any sort of need they have, it's like you you take it on and like, oh, I'll, I'll do it. And then somebody else comes around, five other people come around and they say, oh, you know, I just, I have a hard time. And they're not asking you. I feel like you're volunteering your services to all of these people. But by the end of the month, you're going to realize like how stretched thin you are with all of this, you know, taking on all of these burdens. You're going to realize that you can't do this all by yourself. And as much as you made all these promises to people, but you're going to realize that you can't deliver. Um, and I feel like at the end of the month, you're going to be accepting defeat and communicating with these people that, you know, you can't help them like you said. And um, some people might take that personally and feel like, you know, you just don't want to help them or, you know, you're a two time and grimy person or whatever, because you promised that you would be there or promise you would deliver in whatever way you promised them. But you're going to realize that, like when you think about just the overwhelming feeling you feel of taking everything on, you're going to be very apologetic, but you're going to be like, I physically cannot do all of this. Like it's impossible for me to do it. So you're going to be saying a lot of sorries to people um, and rescinding your help from a lot of situations. And as I said, it's going to leave some people upset because they're not going to understand why you offered in the first place. But I don't really... Un I'm trying to figure out whether or not you come into the understanding that you are avoiding something about yourself in your own life no i'm not getting that at least if you know deep down i feel like you're still gonna be in that avoidant energy about whatever is going on with yourself it's just that you're still gonna be taking on some other people's burdens but i feel like you're gonna have to drop some but I don't feel like you're going to drop everything to tend to whatever it is you have to tend to in yourself because you don't want to face it for whatever reason. You just feel like it's unpleasant. Um, I'm hearing like you don't want to feel like a failure. So maybe there's been like something you perceive to be a failure in your own life and you don't want to acknowledge that. Or like the more time you spend with yourself, you know, just alone or in your own space or company, it makes you remember that failure. And so, yeah, you just, it's like you want to go travel off into La La Land and just forget everything and just experience happy rainbows and butterflies. And uh, you don't, you don't mind other people's misfortunes or, you know, acknowledging their failures and helping them through it. You just don't do that for yourself. So, yeah, I feel like that as a result, you're going to take on a lot more, bite off a lot more than you can chew. But then you're going to have to drop some and that's going to leave some people upset because they're going to be like, why did you offer in the first place if you know you couldn't do it? Okay, so let's move on to Leo. Time stamp. Okay, Leos. Leos, you are very much um, in the energy of like, you are the most important person in your life. Unlike cancer, where they're taking on other people's burdens, I feel like you are so concerned with yourself, where you need to be, which needs to complete for your own life that you are not offering yourself or your help to anything or anyone else around you that does not serve you. You feel like, I'm hearing you feel like this has been a long time coming, so you don't feel selfish about it. You just feel like this is your time. And maybe a lot of you are saying like 2022 is the year of you. So you're just like, okay, I'm not going to apologize for choosing myself first and taking care of myself first. So you're, you're unapologetically focused on yourself and really nothing or no one else. If there is a focus on someone else, I feel like in some way, shape or form, that person or situation serves you. So in the at the end of the day, it's like, it's still about you. And um, cause you feel like you owe yourself a lot. I'm getting that you feel that 
you have been robbed of a lot of opportunities that you didn't put enough effort into yourself in the past. And it's like this year, you're starting off the the year in January where like you owe yourself a lot. So you're going for everything you lost. Every opportunity that you didn't pick up before, you're picking it up now. Everything that you failed to do before, you're doing it. You're moving on from like, a poverty mentality I'm getting because I feel like before you had a lot of language where you would tell yourself I can't a lot and it's like you no longer want to think like that you don't want to feel that way you don't want to operate like that in your life you're telling yourself you're changing that I can't to I can and you're sticking to that it's like you're not going to break this momentum for anything you're starting i feel like you made a vow to yourself at the end of 2021 and you're fulfilling it at the very top of 2022 and you're planning to maintain that momentum through the rest of the year and um you want us to i feel like you're sending a message to maybe someone or some people who have been telling you that you weren't going to be anything or that will you know have all this negative talk about you it's like you want to shut all of that down you want to send a message to the haters pretty much and let them know that you can do it and you will succeed despite any of their you know any of the naysayers and what they have to you know everything they've had to say thus far you're completely unleashing every bit of resource you have to make sure that you reach whatever level of success that you have been dreaming of. You are determined to make yourself, you're determined to feel like somebody. And in order to do that, you know that there's gonna take a lot of effort and dedication on your part when it comes to dedicating and investing in yourself. So that's what you're doing. And you don't, anybody or anything that gets in the way, you're just steamrolling over them and saying like, I don't have the time. And if anybody wants to pitch in and help, great. But like I said, you're never going to take the focus off of yourself, um, especially this month, because you just feel like you have a lot of work to do, um, a very strategic plan to execute, and you just don't have time to dibble and dabble in anything that is not benefiting that plan. Okay, so let's move on to Virgos. Timestamp. Okay, Virgos. You have, I feel like you're holding a secret, but I feel like the secret is not yours. The secret may in some way, shape, or form involve you, but I feel like you don't play an intricate part in the secret if that's the case. I feel like this is someone else's secret and you have vowed to keep that secret for them. And I feel like you might be implicated in some way in some sort of situation surrounding that secret and you're being questioned, but it's like you're holding that secret for this person. If it involves you in any way, I feel like maybe you witnessed something and then like you weren't like an active party and whatever went on, but maybe you witnessed it and the people involved in whatever was going down, they swore you to secrecy and you agreed. And I feel like up until now, you've been keeping that secret, but something has come up. Somebody is sniffing around and for some reason you're being asked about what happened but i feel like you're holding it down and you're keeping that secret because you take that very seriously like the vow you took to keep this secret you take it very seriously others of you i'm getting that you might fear um the people involved in the secret like you might fear backlash from them in some way so you kind of feel like you don't really have a choice but to keep the secret because for some of you you're keeping the secret for someone who's really close to you And for others of you, you're keeping the secret for someone you barely know. Like you just happen to walk up on something that you were not expecting and now you're in it. And these people value, you know, swear to secrecy. For some of you, very few of you, maybe you even got paid off to keep the secret. Um, But however it played out for you, you're keeping that secret. Whether it be because you feel threatened to or because you really value your relationship with the person whose secret you're keeping. 
but you're not breaking your vow for anybody. I feel like someone is trying to play you, like they're trying to get close to you. Oh, you know what? I'm getting that the people who swore you to secrecy, they might be, uh, like I said, something is coming up where someone is sniffing around, like the, the rumor about that secret may be floating around, like somehow it resurfaces or it comes to light, but no one knows the, the facts, the details of what happened other than you who witnessed it and the, the people involved. Um, other than that, it's just unconfirmed rumors and the people involved want to keep it that way. And whatever vow of secrecy they have with you before, they might be coming around trying to make sure that you're still going to keep that secret. So they might be coming around trying to butter you up, acting real friendly, like hitting you up out the blue, trying to take you out, you know, offering you things. But they're not coming right out to say like they're doing this because they want you to make sure that you're going to keep this secret. They instead are just feeling like um, they just need to butter you up to make sure that you stay, they stay on your good side so that you don't rat them out. But yeah, I just feel like they don't even need to do that because you're just like, I said I would keep the secret, so I'm keeping the secret. But I do feel like you might be accepting, like if they're gifting you things, taking you out, giving you whatever opportunities is like you're accepting it like you know that why they're doing this but I don't feel like they're going to be bold enough to say like hey are you gonna be good like you you still gonna keep the secret like we promised I don't feel like they're gonna try to they're gonna try to avoid asking you outright like asking that question but um you know why they're buttering you up but you're taking it all in and just saying like, you know, in your mind, you're saying you don't even really have to do all this because I'm going to keep your secret anyway. But I'll take your, you know, I, I'll accept it. I'll accept your gifts. I don't even feel like you're rattled by like keeping this secret. Like it's nothing for you. Like you're a secret keeper. I don't know if this is like a general thing for you. But I feel like in this situation, you're not rattled. Like if someone does come around asking, you're not even breaking a sweat. Like you're not, if you were to be interrogated, like you would be the coolest, calmest person. Like you're not telling it for anything. You're cool with keeping a secret. But I feel like the people whose secret it is, they're like sweating bullets, wondering if you're going to keep the secret. So they're just coming in to kind of reinforce things in a roundabout way with you. But like I said, you're going to accept whatever they're offering, but you're going to be saying to yourself like, hey, you don't even need to do all that because I wasn't never, I was never going to say anything anyway. The, I, I hear you're saying like, it's none of my business. So whatever you saw, whatever you witnessed, you just feel like it's something personal with that person that everybody doesn't need to know anyway. And so like your conscience is saying like, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't want nobody to notice. It's like, even if this person isn't close to you, it's something about it where you're just like, it's none of, it's nobody's business. And if I was in their shoes, I wouldn't want people to know either. So like, I'm going to do the right thing and handle it the way I would want the situation handled if I were in their shoes. Okay, so let's move on to Libras. Let me timestamp this here. Okay, Libras. Libras, you don't have time for the fake stuff this month. You are, I feel like you have been prior to this month hanging around like certain crowds and keeping up with appearances and you're breaking away from that this month. You're like, even if it means you have to kind of go into hiding, go into hermit mode to take care of your business, but you're like, I'm tired of the fakery. I'm not going to be on the scene like that. I'm not hanging around these people. I'm not you know, some of you might even be like uh, deactivating your social media pages because you don't want to feel the pressure to keep up with certain appearances. But yeah, either way, however this plays out for you, you're done with the fakery. You're like, I don't have time for that anymore. You're determined to make a change in your life. And it's because of I feel like you you experienced some sort of pitfall recently. And you realize that the reason you were caught in that pitfall is because of whatever the fakery is that you were surrounding yourself with or whatever you were engaging in. And you're like, 
I can't do that again. I don't ever want to be in this situation again. So in order for that to happen, I have to make sure that I stay away from the fakery. So yeah, I feel like you're kind of going off to yourself. However this plays out for you, I feel like you're keeping quiet in some way. Like you're disappearing and going into your own, you know, cocoon. And um, yeah, a lot of you are building in silence. Some of you, you're working on some sort of business idea that, you know, you had and you don't really want all of that energy around you while you work on this so you're like you're going off to yourself and um silently building and i feel like this is a first for a lot of you i don't feel like this is something that you've done before i don't even feel like you really know the ins and outs of how to do this successfully but you're doing it some of you you're going into some sort of merger or contract um that you're keeping under wraps for now like you all might be going into negotiations for some sort of business um, or sort of partnership. Um, I don't get romantic. I mean, it could be, but I just get that this is some sort of kind of some sort of business merger mainly that you're working on, a collaboration. And I feel like you're keeping it under wraps until things are finalized, not only finalized, but like finalized and everything is like, released so if there is something to be released from this merger you don't want to let anybody know until that product or whatever is out there because um hmm i feel like whatever you're doing is a very big deal at least to you and i feel like to others too and that's a lot of the reason why you're like not wanting any of that energy around it you might also not be wanting anyone to come in and uh, steal an opportunity for you because maybe you have people around you that you would hang with who you know was somewhat like a snake. And like if they knew about the opportunities that you had, they would try to come in and steal it for themselves. I feel like you have a bunch of fake a, a bunch of fake friends around you. Or maybe you may not even consider them friends. They may be more associates. But either way, they may be around you a lot. And so because you know the personality of these people and how they don't really truly root for you and how they would try to steal from you, this is why you're doing, you're going away from all of that energy, working on whatever you're working on, and then only coming back out when everything is finalized and produced. Okay, so let's move on to Scorpios. Timestamp this here. Okay, Scorpios, mm, I feel like what you thought was over is actually being granted a new beginning. It's like you go into the, I feel like you go into the new year morning something and just to find out like as January, you know, continues to unfold that this is actually, it's only like a phase of whatever has died and like a new phase of it is being birthed beginning this month. So it's like when it starts to unfold, you're going to be saying to yourself, like, I thought this was over. I thought this was dead, but somehow you're going to get confirmation to say like, no, only that phase of it died. We're moving it. You're moving into a new phase. So yeah, technically that is over, but only that part of it, the whole thing itself still has a lot of way to like, it has a long way to go. I'm hearing I'm hearing the Tony Braxton song Ovi over and I'm hearing the lyrics the specific lyric that says uh Okay, I didn't lost the lyrics. But yeah, I just get it's more of that energy of like you thought something was over. And you are going to start off this year, like start off the month in mourning of whatever this is just to find out that it's not done 
it's another go. Like it could literally be another phase of something unfolding or like it could just be a situation as a as a whole like you thought was coming to a close. But then it gets like a revival out of nowhere around mid-month. And if it is like a situation you thought was dead, it's like it's, it's coming back around not only revived, but better. So it's like you're getting introduced to like a better version of whatever this is. It's like it's coming back around more refined, more mature, more uh, just better. Just overall, just very like much better than what you left what it left you as or what you when it closed out or when you thought it closed out it's like a newer version of it is being introduced it goes back to what i was mentioning earlier about like a phase of it has died but like a new phase has been born and this phase is like it's much better than the phase that just ended so um you're watching some baggage fall away it's like you're i feel like you're more of the spectator in this situation but this could be you i just get that someone is watching someone else like clean up their life like clean up their act it's like any baggage they had is like it's being packed up and shipped away and it's like someone else has like a front row seat to observe it all so if this is like a a pairing of some sort it's like someone is coming back around um, as a better version of themselves and you're gonna like witness this person like changing right before your eyes like changing their ways and getting rid of certain things that they struggle with for a long time and um yeah it's like you have a front row seat to it all as well as others I feel like others are observing this you know change as well but it's like you have a special front row seat because you might be the inspiration for this person's change. If this if this involves a person, it makes you more open to giving this person another chance, like giving, uh, like pouring out yourself to this person, not just emotionally, but I just mean like your energy. You don't mind investing your energy in this person. Um, with what you're seeing because you see them making a turnaround you see them making a huge change and so the ways that you probably held back before you don't feel the need to do that anymore because you see this person is actively working to change um, not only to impress you but they just overall want to be a better person but you might like I said be the inspiration behind it so yeah it's like you're opening your energy up to them now because you feel like now you can trust yourself to do that with them. Okay, so let's move on to Sagittarius. Time stamp this here, Sagittarius. Okay, Sagittarius, I feel like you all, when the month starts, you're, I'm hearing at a breaking point. And you realize that you can no longer travel any further on the road that you've been traveling this far, because that road is ended. It's like, it's a cliff at the, like, you're right at the cliff part. So it's like, you're either going to jump off that cliff or go back. Now, if you jump off this cliff, it's a possibility that you might land on a platform below and that platform might include uh, so much more on that road or that platform than the road that you traveled this far. But because you don't know exactly what's, you know, off this cliff, you're afraid to jump. So I just get that you, that's, it's like you're stuck. You feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because you don't, you know, you can't go back to whatever you were doing, but you're afraid to go forward. But you have to make a decision one way or the other. And I feel like that's stressing you out. Mm 
Yeah, I feel like you are faced with a decision that is stressing you out. And I feel like as time, like as the days progress through the month, it's like more and more the pressure mounts for you to make a decision. And yeah, I'm hearing like, I'm getting like wrap that shit up. Like you can, you can no longer do what you've been doing. You can't stay in this spot looking back and forth between the two options either. You need to do something. You need to make a move. You need to bust the move. So yeah, the pressure is mounting this month. And I do feel like you're going to make a decision. You're going to want to make this decision with your head instead of your heart. But I feel like you're going to be pulled to make your choice or your decision based on like your heart more. Um, yeah, it's like your your head is going to be saying, no, I'm just going to do the logical thing. And the logical thing might be to just go back, you know, but it's just your emotions are pulling you to jump off that cliff. And I feel like this is really... Uh, is I'm hearing soul pulling. So this whole, this urge to pull you in this unknown direction, it is like pulling at, it's tugging at your soul. And um, I don't feel like you can ignore the call anymore. It's like you have to jump. So you're jumping. And you're, it's like you're jumping with the hopes that everything is going to turn out fine. You don't know, and part of you cringe at the, like, you're going to cringe at the thought that it might not turn out well, but, um, I'm hearing deep within, I feel like deep within, you made this choice a long time ago, but you've just been afraid of, like, going forward with it. So yeah, it's like you're committing. You're committing to a choice. And I feel like that choice is going to be the choice to jump off that cliff. Because you, although you can't see everything that in that direction, you've seen everything on the road that you've already traveled. So you're like, I can't really go back there because I already saw all of that. And it wasn't that interesting. You know, there's a lot of pain a lot of heartache, a lot of disappointment. Just overall, it wasn't fun. So you're like, I could jump off this cliff. It's scary as hell because I don't know what's down there. But what, you know, the off chance that it is something amazing waiting for me off this cliff, let me go in this direction. So yeah, it's like you're committing to a decision finally in the month of January. And um, yeah, you're no longer split. I feel like you're very confident in a choice you're making and I do feel like that choice is to move forward in a direction that you have not been yet okay so let's move on to Capricorn time stamp this year Okay, Capricorns, I feel like you go into the year, you start the month being very hopeful about, uh, you know, this new energy or whatever plan you have for the year, but you're going to be greeted with some sort of like obstacle, like right off the bat in the month of January. It's like as you're going forward with whatever plan you have in place, you realize that it's a lot harder to execute than you anticipated. And um as much as you're trying to move forward, it just feels like so many things get placed in your way or you keep getting, getting pulled back, you know, to start. And so it builds a lot of frustration. It might even lead you, uh, cause I feel like you might've made these plans to execute whatever this is by like alone by yourself. But I get the sense like you're going to realize like, as these obstacles keep mounting, you're going to realize you need help. 
So I do feel like you're going to phone in help, like figuratively, of course. Like you could literally be calling someone for help, but you're going to realize that you can't do this alone. So and I'm hearing it takes a village. So yeah, what you were planning to do alone, you're going to realize you need a team. And um, this might be causing you to put a lot of pride, like suck up your pride a lot. But you're going to realize that it's like the best thing you could have ever done. And you're going to be like so mad at yourself that you didn't think to do it this way from the start. Because it made it with you having a team, it made everything a lot easier. You know, it wasn't it's not so hard. It's not so difficult because there are so many hands on the fire at once. And, you know, while someone is working on something, someone else is working on something else. You're working on something else and it gets the job done more quickly. And you're going to realize like how much support you have, because you might have been questioning that at one point. You might have said to yourself, like, I don't really have any help. I don't really have any friends. I don't have nobody who truly supports me and my dreams. But when you call up these people for help, they're going to show up and they're going to really show up in the sense of like helping you with whatever this is. And you're going to realize like how much love you do have around you because at Capricorns, I feel like you've been doubting it. And so if there was ever a point where you were starting to feel like you weren't loved, you weren't appreciated, this moment, when you gather this team and see how they come through with you, it's going to remind you like how loved you are, how appreciated you are, and how privileged you are to have such an amazing circle around you. So yeah, this moment is happening for more than one reason. Of course, to offer you the help to execute whatever this is more smoothly but it's also going to act as a reminder to you that you are not alone and you're cherished and loved although at one point in time you were you were thinking the complete opposite okay so let's move on to aquarius let me timestamp this here Okay, Aquarius, I'm getting pent up frustration. I feel like on the outside, you look all put together and normal and, you know, you're breathing fine, but inside you're having like a panic attack. And this is over something that like some pent up frustration over a situation or it could be several situations that um, you're really stressed out about because I feel like behind the scenes, there's a lot going on, but you're not sharing it openly. And so like when you're around people or whenever you're doing whatever you're doing in your daily life, like no one has any idea what you're suffering with in the background. But I feel like when you get alone, you know, um, with your, you know, either with yourself or with your confidants, it's like that's when the frustration all comes out. I'm getting like someone venting on the phone to their bestie. So you might be expressing this to someone very close to you but i feel like the people at large around you are like are so unaware yeah i'm hearing like no one knows what you, you're going through because you look so put together it's like the picture you put out there is you you perfected it so i feel like you've been keeping that up you've been keeping up appearances but I just get like in January, like it might be becoming too much for you to keep up that appearance. And so some of you have been keeping this to yourself completely, like you haven't been telling this to anyone. And so you might be reaching a point where you're finally breaking down and telling your bestie what's been going on. For others of you, you might do it um, more openly, like you might decide to vent one uh, social media or in a group chat, you know, to your loved ones about what's really happening with you. I'm hearing like struggling with mental illness. So some of you, you've been struggling with like um, some sort of mental illness, like you're becoming aware that you might have some sort of mental um, disorder and you're reaching out to your loved ones to uh, help you through it or to help you um, find resources to help you through it. But I just get that you're opening up in some way um, because you've been keeping it to yourself for too long and you feel like you're about to explode if you don't say anything.
I'm getting like someone showed you the back of their head. So someone turned away from you. And this might be triggering all of this. This might be triggering this this uh, frustration. This, uh, for some of you, mental disorder that might have gotten. I'm not going to say that this, you know, helped made you develop the mental disorder. Some of you already had it, but maybe this situation triggered it um, to come forward to the point that you need help in dealing with it now. Like maybe you're coping with it fine on your own. But now with this uh, triggering event, it's like you can no longer handle it by yourself. Yeah, but for some of you, I get that it's because someone turned their back on you. And um, it made you, it left you with a lot of questions because maybe this person didn't give you the, didn't give you closure. They didn't give you an explanation for doing what they did. It's just like they left. They just ghosted you. And so it made you wonder like what you did wrong. Like you have a million questions and you may have even reached out to this person to give you answers, but they've given you none. So it's like that, un it's like that, that lack of closure with that situation triggered something in you that is making it hard for you to cope, making it hard for you to deal alone anymore in the way that you would normally. And I'm hearing embarrassed. So yeah, like someone could feel embarrassed by how things turned out. And maybe that's why you've been keeping it to yourself all of this time, because you've been embarrassed to talk about it. Talk about the fact that this situation happened to you in the first place or the fact that you reacted like that to whatever happened to you. But yeah, it's like you can't hold it in anymore. Like I said, some of you, you're, you're giving a more... Um, you're requesting a more private audience to your, your frustration and situation through like one person for others. It's a small group for others. You might just go more open and decide to have like a full on vent on social media. But either way, you're getting it out because you can't hold this in anymore. And some of you are going to seek professional help um, because you feel like that's the next natural step in order for you to truly heal from the situation. Okay, so let's move on to finally to Pisces. Let me timestamp this here. Okay, I'm hearing a door. Some of you have something going, I feel like some of you have someone in your life in January that you truly adore. Um, some of you, this is a pet that you have recently, uh, gotten and you like, you truly adore your little pet for others. This is a romantic partner. I feel like this person is like saying and doing all the right things and you truly adore them. Like you just, I feel like you can just stare at them all day, listen to them speak all day and just never get tired. And if this is a person, like a romantic situation specifically, I get that this person truly, like, you love the fact that they love you for who you truly are. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to look or dress a certain way. Like, they love you in your most natural state. So you can truly be yourself. And maybe that's not some, maybe that isn't something that, um, you all have ever had before. I'm getting that very strongly. So that's why you adore this person so much because they're giving you an energy you've never had in your life. They're showing you love and appreciation in a way that no one dared before. And um, the, the love and appreciation and adoration you feel from them, it's like you're wanting to give all of that back. Because it honestly feels somewhat like a fairy tale to you. Like you didn't think anyone like this existed until now. They put you on a pedestal. But it's like instead of them just putting you on a pedestal, you want to put them on a pedestal, you know, with you. It's like you're like, come up here too. Like you, you're not okay with this person just adoring you. Like you want to adore them just in the same way. You want to pour into them exactly what they pour into you or maybe even more. 
Because not only by the way they treat you, but I feel like what this person represents you know, maybe even how they look, you just feel like this person is a prize and they view you that way. But it's like, you're like, are you kidding me? Like you are a prize. Like get up here. Um, Be careful though. Cause I'm getting that. Don't be careful not to move too fast. So for some of you, this is a brand new relationship that's coming in for you this month. And you might already be talking like, or you might have just met them within, within the last couple months. But I just feel like within a short amount of time, you could already be start to throw out hints or have conversations about moving in together. And spirit is not wanting you to take that step yet. Like allow, I'm hearing allow a change of seasons. So I feel like at least wait uh, one year, like a full change of seasons in order for you to, you know, start discussing that step and actually take it. Cause I just feel like moving too fast in the situation may cause things to sour. Cause you, it's like, while everything is good right now, you still have some things to learn about each other. So spirit is wanting you to take it slowly. And it's kind of like, enjoy this time and this space where you're still two individuals and um, when the time is right, I feel like you're going to, uh, you know, if you all make it through the chain, like a full year change of seasons, then you can revisit this conversation and it will be a, a, a good time for you to take that next step. Some of you might even be trying to discuss marriage within the next couple of months. Again, Spirit is advising you to slow down and not move too fast. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Don't get too excited. You need to wait at least one full year. So about January 2023, you all could be revisiting this conversation and considering taking the next serious step of moving in together, getting married, anything of that nature. Um, because there, you have some things, to, not to say that the things you're going to learn are bad, but you just have to like experience some true things together in order for that step together to truly work out and last. Okay, so that's about all I have for you all for this mini January reading. I hope that reading was helpful to you. Again, if you would like to check out your uh, year ahead readings, you can find that link below to my Vimeo channel. If you would like to book a personal reading, you can find that link below as well. And follow me on Instagram at Serene Dream. And I'll be back with my readings, lovelies. Bye.